think you might have a leak, but you've looked in all the easy to see places. No leaky toilet flappers, dripping faucets, or sprinkler heads shooting water sky high. Maybe the leak is in one of the hardest places to detect, below your slab foundation. With cross fingers, you're asking a plumber named YouTube. Welcome. Here are 15 different ways of detecting a supply plumbing leak under a slab foundation. We're going to go through all the potential signs so you might even detect it before the first atrocious water bill. Step 11 hits your mailbox. We're going to go from most obvious to harder to detect, which kind of happily coincides with cheapest to more expensive. I also want to be upfront and tell you that some of these methods tell you where a leak is present and others only tell you that one exists. Number one, check the plumbing line going out of the water heater. Do you see anything? Do you hear anything? The sound of rushing water is the first clue you're on the right track. This is the place you'd rather hear the sound. You can shut off the hot water without shutting off the entire house. This is my favorite place to find a leak and where I luckily had one. Given you don't feel lucky at the time, but it's the best of the bad answers if you have a traditional trunk and branch system as opposed to a really awesome manifold system. More on that towards the end. In this case, you can still flush the toilet while you determine the source of the leak and get it fixed. If you don't hear anything, then number two, check the main plumbing stack coming into the house. Do you see anything? Do you hear anything? Now, I will confess, I don't go out and listen to the water main going into my house on a daily basis or weekly or monthly. This is also a good point to note that just because you didn't hear anything at the water heater doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with the hot water line. Perhaps the leak is too small or even worse, the leak occurs between the main stack and the water heater. A leak before the unit is just as bad as a cold water line leak in terms of using sound to detect the problem. The next few of these detection methods really only apply to hot water line leaks before we head into worst case scenarios. Number three, pet detection. If you have a cat or dog, finding them unusually comfortable in an unusual spot is a highly effective way of detecting the location of a hot water leak. Honestly, the cat found my under slab foundation leak before I noticed. He detected the warm spot on the floor leading away from the water heater. Number four, feel the floor yourself. Many water heaters are automatically set to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 120 degrees is another recommended temperature for energy conservation. Even if you do not have a canine or feline warm spot magnet mechanism to determine the location, it's easier to find the warm spot in comparison to a cold water leak where there's not much difference in temperature from the water leaking below the slab. Number five, the water heater is constantly running. Number six, have you unwillingly started taking cold showers? Another sign of a hot water supply line leak is when the water in the shower is noticeably colder. It's still cold. Number seven, a consistent drop in water pressure. You may notice your water pressure is slowly dropping. Hopefully you're not here. Step eight, pop tiles or soggy carpets. Concrete is porous. Even though the plumbing lines run below the slab, a leak is a constant source of water soaking into the concrete. This is true if the slab was not prepared with a vapor barrier or if the vapor barrier was damaged during the concrete pour. However, as we discovered in a past video, it will take a very long time before a leak seeps through. There is a saying, it's not if a slab will crack, it's when. In my introductory seal sealer video, it only took 21 minutes for water to climb up a two x four base plate. A crack in the slab will allow water to percolate up at a pretty fast rate as well. If water makes its way to the top of a slab, the mortar gluing your tile will eventually disconnect from the saturated cement, starting with a creaky tile. You can also be unpleasantly surprised with a damp sock or squished between your toes if the leak appears in the carpeted room. With hardwood flooring, you'll see cupping. Number nine, mold, mildew, or musty smell. Sometimes you'll smell it before you see it or feel it. If you smell a funky odor, it might just be water seeping up through the concrete into your flooring or walls. While this isn't a concrete slab here, it shows you the kind of damage a slow leak can wreak undetected on a house. Number 10, movement of the foundation. Wet soil can heave, causing the foundation to shift and crack. On the inside, you may see tile or drywall cracking and doors and windows having difficulty opening and closing. If you start having foundation problems, check that it's not caused by a leak in the plumbing below. Expectation number one. If your foundation problems are the result of something else, get that solved first. Don't throw money at a problem without solving the cause. 
Otherwise, you'll just pay for foundation repairs again later. Then it's on to getting the foundation fixed. Step 11, keep tabs on your water bill. I know many of us automate this bill and we don't look at it. However, at least take a peek. Like you do your credit card statement when you're reviewing your purchases before you pay it off every month. Did it go unexpectedly sky high? You might be the new neighborhood car wash and you might want to invest in some wise cams or you most likely have a leak. Number 12, run your own test with the water meter. Make sure no water is running intentionally anywhere in the house, not even the ice maker. Then go check your water meter outside. Is it moving? If it isn't, you may still want to check out this past video here. Number 13, run a test with the water pressure gauge. Some leaks are too small for the water meter. For a couple Starbucks Frappuccinos, you can order a water pressure gauge and have it in hand tomorrow. Then watch this video and you'll have your answer. Number 14, put in a whole house monitoring system. Can't find the problem but want to know how bad the leak is? A whole house water monitor and shutoff system like this Fin Plus will tell you how bad your plumbing is leaking. The best part about a system like this is it is monitoring your plumbing system 24-7, 365. If you are home or away, your home is protected. If there's a leak, it will notify you, and even if it's offline in the event of an emergency, it still has the ability to shut off the water if there's still power to the unit. Number 15, call in a forensic plumber. A forensic plumber will bring in their detection equipment and, in addition to finding the location of the leak, map out your plumbing lines. Once you have a leak strong enough to detect, this step is inevitable with the trunk and branch system. You need to know where the problem is and where your invisible lines are run so you know where to put in a bypass. Here, an X with painter's tape marks the spot. And here's where the trunk and branch system splits the hot water line in the wall where we put in the bypass. Now I will say there's some debugging you can do with your water meter, a water pressure gauge, or a whole house water monitor before calling in a professional to pinpoint the leak. And I will cover that in a follow-on video. Again, if you easily find a leak, possibly without any tools beyond the water heater, at least you don't have to shut the water off to the entire house. And goodness, this is such a wonderful argument for a water manifold system. For those of you who don't know me, I absolutely love water manifold systems for so many different reasons. The ability to shut a single home run down and leave the entire rest of the house running is one of those major reasons. It's a good idea to add checking for plumbing leaks to your regular home maintenance routine. Or if you're not a maintenance person or you travel quite often, you might want to consider a whole house water monitor. From my perspective, I already had one leak and I figured my plumbing system was more than likely to have another leak in the future. So I went all in on a whole house water monitor just for peace of mind. Also, make sure to get it fixed as soon as possible. Foundation repairs are terrible to fix because there are so many repercussions, as I went into grave detail here. If you're interested on the whole house water monitor option, I have a few videos out there on Flow by Moen and Fin Plus, with more coming out soon on these systems. Now I would like to hear from you. Have you ever had a supply of plumbing leak under your slab foundation? And if so, how did you find it? If there's something different, definitely add it to the comments below. And even if you did, I'm not saying misery loves company, but this is to share with other people who are in the same boat as you and me looking for answers. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.